My name is Leon Doucette. I'm the curatorial assistant at the Cape Ann Museum, uh, where we have this wonderful special exhibition, Harrison Cady, View from the Headlands, which is open until October 28th. So who was Harrison Cady? Uh, Harrison Cady was a beloved member of the Cape Ann art colony, uh, mainly in Rockport, I guess you could say the Rockport art colony, but he spent some time uh, in Gloucester as well. Uh, what we have in this exhibit are a range of paintings. Some of the first work that he did visiting here in Cape Ann in work extending all the way to the end of his career. Harrison Cady was first and foremost an illustrator. He was born in Gardner, Massachusetts and when he was in his 20s he went to uh, New York City and he worked for a few years for a Brooklyn newspaper making editorial cartoons worked for a few other papers, eventually moving on to Life Magazine, where he worked for decades. And uh, as a longtime illustrator there, right around that same time, this is about 1911, he started a um, collaborative relationship with the children's book author Thornton Burgess. It was uh, hired on to illustrate Thornton Burgess's versions of Peter Rabbit, uh, Reddy Fox. Uh, there was a whole host of bedtime story illustrations that Harrison Cady and Thornton Burgess worked together on for uh, basically from 1911 until I think they announced their, um, their, the conclusion of the series in 1959. So it was a really, really long uh, and fruitful relationship. He was an illustrator who uh, came up as a uh, self-taught artist. He sort of cut his teeth in the editorial world and learned how to create images through working around strict deadlines and trying to uh, produce an image that would communicate a message quickly. When Harrison Cady eventually made his way to Rockport, he was really influenced by a lot of the landscape painters that were, that were calling this area their home. We know that on one of uh, Cady's early trips to the area, he came with his mother. They were staying in a a Rockport Hotel, but he left his mother there in the hotel to stay for a little while on a wharf in Gloucester. And the accommodations that he got was the um, was one of the cabins of a of a docked schooner. The work that he starts doing in Rockport and, and in Gloucester, we have some paintings of Half Moon Beach behind me, uh, a number of paintings of motif number one in here. It's a different visual language. It's so much different than the editorial work that he was doing for uh, Life magazine. So by 1915, Harrison Cady settled into a pretty solid schedule. In the morning, he would get up, and we know this from his journals. He would get up, he would do what he would call his dailies, which would be the typical illustrations that would appear in a newspaper. Then he would go to the post office in the, around noon, would drop them off at the post office to be shipped back to his publisher, and then would spend the afternoon either painting or socializing. One of the reasons why this show and Harrison Cady's work in general uh, is, is interesting to members of the, of the community is that he takes a lot of familiar areas. So this is um, Story Boatyard in Essex, and but again, you don't see it this, just in this painting, but also in paintings of motif number one. Um, there's so many different recognizable landscapes around here. Um, but he has this ability to take a familiar scene and to distill it down to something that feels almost mythic or it, that has this storybook quality. He sort of plucks it out of time and it sort of exists in its own space, which I, I think is, is there's something quaint about that, but I also think in, uh, there's something universal about these images. They aren't just a snapshot of what this boatyard looked like in 1931, but um, you can see that there's, there's energy, there's something, something larger here. And for those of us that live here and look at uh, motif number one every day, um, just to see it through that lens is, is really something amazing. So here we are by uh, Animal Picnic, which is a, a textbook style for Harrison Cady. It's his it's illustrative children's book style. Um, and it shows a group of anthropomorphized animals that are sort of picnicking, drinking, playing, having a good time. And uh, we see a series of these types of images uh, that use frogs, turtles, insects, weasels, um, all different types of animals 
and uh, doing a variety of things, whether it's fishing or like we see here, having a picnic or having a party. Um, and there's another painting in this exhibition that I felt was uh, important that these be hung in proximity to one another because this other painting shows uh, a group of fishermen, whether Rockport fishermen or Gloucester fishermen, that are essentially doing the same thing. There's, um, the poses aren't necessarily identical, although they're close, and the scale is a little bit different. Um, but you can really see this um, part of the uh, decision-making process where suddenly, rather than just fantastical creatures, we can consider as natives or as Cape Ann residents that maybe what Harrison Katie is doing here, that this is sort of possibly distilling uh, some of these characters that he's seeing on the local wharves down to uh, these characters. So it sort of begs the question, did he have a, a personal language of different animals being representative of different types of people? You know, is there, is there a certain type of person who he would maybe make a note was like a bear or was like, was like a frog or a beaver or a bird or an owl? Because um, these are motifs that we see again and again and again, and sometimes we see palette swaps. I think in some of these three or four paintings around me, we see the same weasel fishing, but in one painting he has gray fur and a red jacket, in another painting he has white fur and blue pants. Um, it's, there's sort of this um, recycling of, of visual language that we see again and again and again, and it's really interesting to consider where it may have come from. One of the strengths of this exhibition is to show Harrison Cady's editorial work, his commercial illustration, his children's book illustration, in a larger context of what we might consider fine art, landscape, uh, work that was really uh, reflecting what other artists were working on. And because Harrison Cady has this funny status of being a self-taught artist, um, it's, it sort of makes you wonder where his influences were, how he developed the certain visual language. Um, and again, one of the points that I was talking about earlier, this difference between painting and, or, or fine art and illustration, um, there's a school of thought that fine art as a painting or a drawing that isn't intended to feed you everything that you need to know, but that there's, that in some poetic way, there's a part of you, there's, there's, there's a role that you play in enjoying a work of fine art, that you bring some of yourself into it, and that works of fine art grow with you over time, and they hold back, there's a little bit of mystery or an unfinished quality. Whereas an illustration is designed to try to feed you as much information as quickly as possible and really get to the heart of what needs to be said. Um, and I think what's really amazing is so, Considering that, illustrations aren't really intended to be looked at for a long period of time. They're just, they're designed to communicate a certain idea and then that's the end of it. Um, but what I really find amazing about some of Harrison Katie's uh, illustrations is you can stand in front of one for 25 minutes, for a half an hour, just following the thread of action of what's, what's happening, what's going on. You see a branch breaking and he's throwing something. And, you can follow this thread all throughout the, the image and you realize you've been looking at the same picture for 25 minutes, which is really an achievement as an illustrator. Mm -hmm.